All right, folks, this is where the rubber really meets the road. I've got a three quarter inch plate on my mill. It is um, clamped down kind of funky because I'm being a little, little um, redneck on this one. I've got to face the entire piece. And so once it gets close to this clamp, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it, move this clamp away or move it up to here, to the corners. And then once it gets down to here, I'll, I'll move this one off. Uh, I'm gonna do something to that effect this time. I've got some of the little Mighty Bite clamps in the mail, but they're not gonna be here till like Thursdays, and I wanna try and go ahead and get this sucker done. So this should work, I think. I just gotta keep an eye on it, make sure I don't do anything dumb, and, and you know, pay attention to what I'm actually doing. Alright guys, well I went to um, face this part with my end mill here and I noticed that I wasn't really getting good flow with my um, pump. Here I'll turn it on and you can kind of listen to it also. I don't think it sounds very healthy and I'm getting no pressure. <laughs> That's like nothing. I mean, I've got my valve turned all the way on. The only thing I can think of at this point is to open up the reservoir where the pump is. So I think I might do that like tomorrow when it's not all dripping and returning back to it so I don't have a mess on my floor. But I'm really hoping that this pump isn't bad because it's only got maybe an hour of runtime on it. Like, I don't know, I started up today and it worked fine and then all of a sudden it just wasn't. So I guess I'm dead in the water for tonight. I'm not going to deal with that with all the coolant running back to it right now. But it feels like it's full. It sounds like garbage though. So I don't know, if something, maybe just something's jammed in it, but it looks like it's going to be coming apart. Bummer. Alright folks, it is the moment of truth. It's time to actually do some real cutting. I attempted to face this part with clamps that were on the top of it. I was hoping I could stop the program, move my clamps over, finish it. And I was getting all sorts of errors and, and everything and it wasn't working so I decided instead of trying to do things the not so right way, I'd go ahead and buy some of the Mighty Bite clamps. So they're over here now. Um, not sure how much I like them yet and you can see my, my config over here isn't exactly perfect either. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them a try. I just I feel like I'm still getting like if I tap on this with a mallet a little bit of movement And I've snugged them up pretty good. I think they're there So I'm just gonna go ahead and use those for that first pass just to clean up the, the material and smooth it out and everything make it flat I've also got a little splash cam here my GoPro mounted to the side So hopefully that'll give us some cool footage um, With the flood cooling I've heard it doesn't really record well, so I'm not expecting much, but it might be cool so we'll check it out. If you're curious what I'm doing, you can see the top there, we're just surfacing everything down. And then at that point, we are hogging out a ton of material with the half inch, three flute. And then we're gonna go ahead and get tighter into the corners and all the little pieces of geometry with a quarter inch flat end mill and then an eighth inch end mill. And then from there, there's a couple holes that need to be drilled and tapped. That'll be the bottom setup. And then we'll have to flip it and do the top. All right, so we got it faced at least. And now I went ahead and switched to my bigger clamps before I really start digging in. So um, I had a hard time making sure this was true to the table or to the x-axis and everything with those little clamps. I felt like every time I cinched down on one of them, it would tweak it a little bit. So I went ahead and when I changed all this out, I made sure to indicate this in with just a wiggler so I need to buy a dial indicator really bad but I made sure that this is straight um, just by guessing and checking almost until it was good yeah, at that point I just tightened down all the clamps and everything and now I'm gonna run the second program I had it all in one program but since I ended up having to move everything around and everything I just had to go repost the file so now I've got um, basically that first facing operation is done and out of the second program Bye. Uh -huh. 
All right, successful roughing pass. Check it out. So you can kind of see there's a lot of complex geometry. There's some little like bosses here that are actually going to get drilled and tapped towards the end. Um, lots of little pockets, multiple depths, all that good stuff. So this was a pretty, pretty fun but challenging part. Um, took a lot of time programming it. And so far, thank goodness, I'll, I'll knock on wood somewhere that it's going well. The first, first tool went really well. Um, so next up is a quarter inch end mill. It's already in the chuck here in the spindle. And so I'll go ahead and do that. That'll just um, uh, square up a lot more of those holes and hit a couple. There's a pocket here and a pocket down here that the half inch end mill didn't want to get. So it'll get those. All right, so quarter inch end mill is done. You can check it out there. The corners are a little tighter. I tried to brush some of that coolant off so you could actually see the bottom of it, but there's actually, I think it's about a half inch hole about every so often there. So it ended up being a ton of holes. The Just the holes by themselves took like half an hour to, to make with the quarter inch end mill. Um, they didn't go very deep, so that's why I didn't pre-drill them. It's only like 50 or 60 thou. So those are all done. Eighth inch end mill is next, and that'll um, square up all the corners, clean everything up, do a cleanup pass around the sides, and then from there it's just drill a bunch of holes so that they can be tapped. All right, folks, it is 1 a.m., if you can see that. I managed to knock out the bottom part though. So there she is, still all nasty and full of coolant and everything and chips. But I think it turned out really, really cool. Um, I'm pretty excited about this piece just because every surface is machined and there's all sorts of geometry on it. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. Here it is off of the mill. All of the sides, I ran a cleanup pass along all of those. So they're all nice and nice and pretty. Um, all the holes look like they turned out okay. But so at this point, everything's done on this side. I'm going to flip it over. I've got a machine out, a ton of cavities where all the little keys and stuff are going to go. And then I'll do a fillet on like the entire border. And it should be done. Fillet and I guess a chamfer around some of the pockets. And then I've got to tap all these holes as M3s. So wish me luck. I hate to leave you folks hanging, but it's already the morning, Sunday morning, so I want to get a video up this week, and I got like, you know, dad stuff to do and everything. So I thought I'd show you what I got done last night. So I flipped the part over last night, and I was able to hog out all of the stuff that, you know, just all the big pockets and everything. So I've got metal shavings galore now, so the next step I'm going to go ahead and clean all that out. Especially the way covers, because I don't yet have way cover covers. Didn't really know that was a thing, but totally necessary as I can tell, because if you start moving the axes, um, you start hearing crunching noises, and that's not good. Those are going to wear out quickly if I do that. So I'll clean all that out, and then I've got like one more pocket to do that was too small for the half inch, and then just cut a slot around it, around the entire part, and do a nice round fillet around the entire part, and then she should be done. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.